Nick Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is Jason Rose, producer of films like Chef and Jane Got a Gun, and the second film we reviewed was Thresher, directed by Mike Diva. Make sure to check it out before watching our review at the link right here, this one, right here. It's somewhere right there. It's in that vicinity, right there. Watch it first. Enjoy the movie and our review. Next film is Thresher. It is directed by Mike Diva and is um, starring Nick Gregorio. Uh, it's a bit confusing because Mike Diva's real name is Michael Dahlquist, and mm -hmm. it's like some places he's listed as Dahlquist, some places he's listed as Diva. He goes back and forth. Yeah, okay. Um, it's a Lovecraftian horror short about a man locked in a room facing interdimensional terror. It's sort of old boy meets the mist. Is how, is how I would describe it. And um, it was one of the finalists in a contest that Guillermo del Toro presided over. It was mm -hmm. uh, lots of views on YouTube, definitely a very popular film. This was a uh, pick by Jason. And mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about this movie. Well, I think this, in short films, especially if you're trying to be that kind of commercial, under 10 minute, you know, big selling point kind of short, you need to check off some boxes. Now, shorts can be anything. You can go artistic and do whatever you want. but. For the most part, if you want to get a story across in a certain amount of time, you kind of need to do, and this takes place for every film, you need character, you need the obstacle, you need the tone, the intention, and then the payoff, right? And it, you just feel good when you have all those kind of in place. He has, I mean, he, and, and Mike does it in a really beautiful way. First of all, the cinematography is, you're invited into this rich, colorful, kind of amber-toned room, right? And you have this guy, you meet the character right away. And, Right after that, you meet the obstacle. So you have this guy, and, and you go through different stages too, because at first you start off with like amusement. He's dancing with himself, he's going crazy, he's literally teeting on lunacy. And, but at the same time, he's picking this lock and trying, and you can tell thousands of tries have gone by before he's done anything. And then you slowly move from that to curiosity, because now you're wondering, why is he even in this room? What is, what's on the other side of the door? What's going on? And before you're too lost in that, you go straight to intrigue. Because he does something, click, the door opens up on the other side, and the moment you go in there and you see what's in there, it goes into terror. And that's when he runs back and you are invested in this character now. You are, you, you want him to unlock that thing. How unlikely that is. And he's just rolling it through it and he finally does it. And that's when you go through the last door and you're invited into horror. Because it's a very different thing, terror and horror. Terror is the, the, you know, the preparation for horror, really. So. To me, you get amazing cinematography, really, really well done direction. Mm -hmm. The actor is fantastic, well actors, because you know, we have some people at the end too, but his imagery, and Mike does this almost all himself, so the imagery itself, I love that kind of stuff. I love that, not just Lovecraftian, but the whole horror sci-fi kind of thing, it's just, I love it. And, it. and it's also a good payoff to something that you've been wondering about for a very long time. So you're not left in the dust Something this commercial needs to have that kind of payoff. And to make it even better, you get like a kicker at the end with the you know, thing. So I don't know, for the, I, I watched all your guys' shorts, your picks first, and I wanted to do something totally different. Some, something, because a lot of these are really beautiful, some of them are slow, some of them are thoughtful, kind of melodic, and I wanted to do something so, so far off. Something entertaining, something kind of screaming. And then I, I, I don't know, I really love this one. It was one of my favorites. Um, I also like this movie a lot. I, it, it's another one of those films that fits into the category of, oh my God, I'm so glad to see something, this high production value happening in a short film, exactly. that sort of category. Um, everything I think, uh, everything Jason said, I, I agree with um, from the standpoint of the cinematography being great. It's, it's a, the director did a wonderful job of setting a really creepy tone. The visual effects are, are amazing. Uh, very well done. Uh, which always blows me away, still. I mean, even though you're seeing more and more and more short films that have great visual effects, I'm still always really, really happy when I see them well done in a short film. Because there are, of course, so many short films still that have really horrible visual effects. Um, my, I mean, if I, ha I, I do have one complaint about this movie. Sure. It's a relatively minor one and you know what it might have more to do with me than the movie because I never react this way to movies and for whatever reason I did with this movie but I kept being like well what is he eating 
right? <laughs> How come his facial hair isn't changing? Yeah. yeah. Not where like, I thought you were going with this. Like, uh, no, I mean, oh, okay. but that's the thing. It's, you know, it even yeah. really sort of surprised me because it's like, okay, lots of time is passing. And he's obviously, I see in his book, he's written down all these tries. He's been here for a really long time, right? But he's never hungry. His face hair doesn't change. His clothes don't change. Yeah, nothing. How's he being fat if he's right? If he's and so, um, and, it, and I guess maybe the reason that something that, you know, I mean, I just basically listed off a bunch of things that within the greater context of this movie don't matter that much. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because everything else was so well done mm -hmm. that I was like, how could you miss a detail like that, right? How could you, I mean, it just, you know, the time is passing, but nothing changes. Um, now, if that was what the movie was about, then that would be another story. But that's not what this movie is about. But I think it, in a long form, that would make a lot more sense. You look at like something like The Walking Dead, and these guys just have perfectly manicured beards, and like sure. nothing has changed. I guess that, just for budgetary reasons, but that makes sense. When it's a seven minute psychological short, it's like, you got, I mean, I don't think you really need, if you did sit down and explain it, it would ruin the, the right. momentum. You know? I guess if they, look, like I mean, I definitely agree like on a budgetary level, like, like having him change his facial hair and his clothes and other things like that may be prohibitive, but do something, right, to, to kind of add to that. And, and again, I did preface all of this by saying it was a relatively minor, uh, mi minor issue. It's just something that for whatever bizarre reason, and I'm usually with you on this, right? I don't notice, like I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, okay who cares though? But in this case, it really bugged me for whatever reason. But it could also just be like the state that he's in. You don't know. Maybe the guy is dead the whole time. Like with the tone of the story, that wouldn't be outlandish. Yeah, he's in a right. dream yeah. fugue state, right? Which is, I he's think... A, he's a medically induced He's coma. medically induced yeah. coma. Right. Which I... One of the flaws of this movie to me was that last scene where they go to the hospital, mm -hmm. that was not clearly enough real world. Like it was still kind of weirdly lit and like I felt like that was still in the dream world. Right. Whereas I think upon watching it a second time, I realized that was supposed to be like waking, like that was supposed to be the real world and he right. was living in dream world. But they were right. too, the styles weren't they different were, enough they were that, maybe to that's really was, make yeah. that clear, you that's know? So point, therefore yeah. it was difficult to tell that he was in a dream state. And how yeah. come every sort of, I mean, I don't know if this technically falls into this genre, but every sort of post, apocalyptic feeling movie or or futuristic movie it, you know it, it, in that bleak world like there's always lots of metal right and, you know <laughs> yeah, like it was metal trophy. metal was beds trophy, and yeah. you know i mean i mean Tentically, so but, it, but again yeah. I, I think it's important to stress like i'm nitpicking on really little things here um, overall, this is definitely, what is it, it's seven minutes? Yeah, seven and a half minutes. minutes. It's I mean, a very satisfying. It's short a, and sweet. It's a really, <laughs> really good movie. Let's get Maria's thoughts yeah. really quickly on this. I mean, I, I enjoy the story because it reminds me of a lot of the, the creepypastas and that sort of thing that I read online all the time. Me too. Um, yeah. No sleep? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Short, yeah, scary really stories. No yeah. sleep last week. Yeah. Um, there's actually one it reminds me of in particular, but I don't remember the name of it. And it's just this like little girl who's talking about um, like going to see their parents, and she basically sends her sister into a coma. Or there's a, a version where it's a dad who sends his daughter into a coma to find out if there's a god or not. It's really messed up, but it kind of reminded me of that. Um, and I really enjoyed. Um, Surprisingly, like I know one of the actors who was in it, so I got to the end, and suddenly you're in that other world, and then just my friend Ruben is standing there, and I'm like, oh, hey, dude, what's up? And then it was like less scary, I guess. So LA that, problems. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Hashtag Hollywood. Yep. Um, but I think my only complaint with this is I don't actually like the the CG stuff. I don't. Too, I don't think it looks good. Yeah. Like the ending, the Cthulhu nightmare kind yeah. of thing? I think the second the door opens and you see like the whole world like that, like the people in the background are moving like sims, like they just, that's not real to me. And so it just kind of took all of the horror out of it. You didn't think it was kind of nightmarish in that way? Like the, I mean, the unrealistic movement sort of like creeps, it didn't creep you out at all? It, it wasn't, as we learned in the last episode, it didn't throw me into Uncanny Valley. It just said, this is not well done. Maria's uncanny valley. Is like yeah, I mean, I mean, I noticed what she's talking about too. I mean, but it, that was, you know, there was, 
the the end that that animation sort of reminded me of sort of a cross of every Tim Burton movie and The Matrix. See, to me, um, it feels like all of the bad sci-fi films that like you watch and you're like, ah, sci-fi. Yeah. What about what about the the creatures in the room in the blue room? I really like the the, the lighting effect, how the it swings back and forth, running around, and oh my gosh, swinging lamps will get me every time. I don't even care. <laughs> You swing a lamp, so that I'm gonna you. jump. <laughs> the, the, the creature that terrifying. appears on the third swing, that yeah. got you. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. That, okay. that creature One of our, uh, our PAs here was shrieking like a small child when that happened when we were watching it earlier. Uh, <laughs> anyway, look, it, 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 we've spent too long on this, but I just want to ask you, uh, you listed several things that a film must have in order to be good. Right. Right. Well, no, I mean, in, in this case, and that's just my opinion. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. In a, in a more commercial in situation. In a commercial, commercial right. but even a commercial uh, framework, and this is some uh, common theme on this show, mm -hmm. you need all these buzzwords, but you also need purpose. Right. Right. And what do you, I just want to know what you think, what was the purpose of this film? Beyond to showcase skills. And to entertain, was there was there a purpose here? Well, it was a contest, so there was definitely a purpose. But I I know what yeah, you mean. I know, so, yeah. but because they had a house and everyone had to use that house, so he I guess it's more a matter of creativity. Like he wanted to tell a story, and the thing is, I think it's sort of brilliant too. Because let's say you have seven minutes or under ten. Usually shorts typically fall under ten. So clearly, the 30, 45 minutes <laughs> is not. But uh, you want to be able to get across at least the character tone and intention right away. And you see him, you see him not so well, and you see that locked door, and that, done. You know exactly what this is about. He needs to get out. It's easy, it's simple, it's, it, it's what you would want to. So I think it's not really the case of, is there a purpose to it? We kind of know, we don't know why he's there, but we know what needs to be done. And I think, and actually that kind of bleeds into one of the other films that we've got too. Yeah. So. And I no, think I, yeah. that's a very common thing that happens in shorts. It's very difficult to tell yeah. a fully developed story um, in seven minutes or 10 minutes or even 15 minutes. It's not an easy thing to do. Sure. And so a lot of, uh, it has become, I, I shouldn't say it's become acceptable. I think it's always been acceptable that you need to sort of set up in an idea you need to have a clear, you know, a clear tone. Um, you need to have a compelling situation and or compelling characters. Yeah. Um, and something needs to happen. And that's enough for a short film. Yeah. Um, I think that if you saw the feature version of this, and I think there's enough there that this could be a feature, that you would get that purpose. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about how Short on Shorts works, or how you can submit your film for consideration, just click right here. And if you want to watch more episodes of Short on Shorts, click right here. You see this area right here? Point. Yep, right there. Click there. See you next time.